the bike isn't here. It bothers me too, the framing is off as per usual. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Right, okay, let's move on swiftly. Hello all of you beautiful little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of whatculture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you the person who is looking at Square Enix, slightly miffed at the fact that I haven't received a royalty check because I've been playing through Octopath Traveler recently and come across the character of The Eggman. The Eggman, seriously? And you're not going to pay me for this? Come on, mate. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than... Lucian for their wonderful suggestion of eight times that you were more of a threat to society than the main video game villain. Because trust me, when it comes to video games, players, well, they're kind of assholes. Because with the release of, let's just face it, it wasn't his best Ryan Reynolds vehicle free guy, the world over came to agree on precisely one thing. And no, it's not that maybe somebody should have taken another crack at the script, because when you lay it all out, it kind of makes no sense whatsoever. Continuity? What the hell's that? Who, who knows, eh? Who knows? No, instead it was that when it comes to video games, the player, aka you, is, uh, yeah, like I said, a bit of a dick. And throughout this film, all we see are players screaming around, destroying everything in their wake, abusing MP season showing little to no empathy for others, and while this is obviously a hyperbolic interpretation of online life, I bet that we could all readily draw from memory times in which we'd witnessed the worst of humanity firsthand whilst just trying to play a bloody game. And it sure doesn't help matters that there are some video games out there that not only encourage but reward you for going on wanton acts of destruction, so let's take a look at the times that we caused carnage and chaos all in the name of sweet sweet cash and loot. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are eight times that you were more of a threat to society in video games than the main villain. Number eight, being the boss, the Saints Row franchise. Now, to be honest, there are a ton of open world games that I could have included here, which all basically boil down to the same scenario. That which posits you in the role of complete and utter bastard face, and as a result, offer up a lot of ways to cross people off your Xmas card list permanently. Okay, so let's see here. So now he's dead, no, he's dead, uh, burned alive, decapitated. James Dows, is he still about? to see about that one. However, when it comes to wreaking utter havoc just for a laugh, Saints Row has all of these pretenders absolutely beat, as upon taking up the mantle of the boss, you basically also adopt a free pass to be a complete and utter sh**. From routinely embarrassing the hard-working police forces around the area, to shoving monstrous dildos up into random civilians and then launching them into the air, this is a playground of utter insanity and you are the school bully, with developer Deep Silver being your little crony yelling YEAH at the end of every sentence. And when you add superpowers into the mix, the mayhem only multiplies, to the point that when any supervillain basically looks at you and says, haha, I'm going to enslave humanity or destroy the earth, you just go, yeah, sure, I mean, I've done that and a bag of chips on the way to the shops this morning. It's like, oh, what are you going to do? Those hostages over there, you're going to kill them if I don't comply. I tell you what, how about I throw a car through your shop window and I'll just mop up anyone who's left over and they'll still call me a hero. Three out of four deaths, still one alive. That's good odds, apparently, in this game. Seriously, in this franchise, you are the utter worst and it's kind of great. Number seven, rolling up the world to make a universe. Katamari Damacy. Now, it's always a bit of a glass shattering moment to find out that your parents aren't perfect, but at least most of us won't have to deal with the rather odd situation that our dear prince finds himself in come the start of Katamari Damacy. You see, dear old dad, going by the rather modest name of King of All the Cosmos, has straight up accidentally deleted the entire universe. And while I'd normally say that this would make for a rather awkward chat over the dinner table, having deleted everything from existence including the table, would make this prospect slightly more difficult. Now, as anyone who's been snapped out of existence by Thanos would likely tell you, you probably harbour a bit of resentment towards that fat-fingered idiot. But what if I was to tell you that those left alive were actually about to have an even worse time? That's because our sweet prince is then tasked with rolling up all the objects he can find on Earth in order to compress them into new stars to replace the ones his dad destroyed. Imagine that, you're going about your daily business and then you've just been rolled up and now you're face to exhaust pipe with a tractor from two miles down the road on that farm. It's just like, what is going on? And then you're about to be compressed into a star. Mondays, am I right? Number six, nuking everything. 
the Fallout franchise. Now, when you finally awaken from your slumber after bashing the head of your vault tech alarm clock so much the model's skull has caved in and then step out into the wild and irradiated wastes of what was once America, you might find yourself immediately thinking, well, this is an utter sh box. And you be right. However, you have to remember that other people also live here, so pick up your litter and spare radiation spewing trash, please and thank you. Yet, despite its rather unhospitable appearance, the various wastelands that you waltz through in the Fallout franchise are teeming with life. And that life usually wants to, you know, keep living, and so probably wouldn't take too kindly to being nuked out of existence. Hell, that is genuinely more evil than most of the villains of these stories, who at the end of the day do want to enslave humanity but want to keep it going, because remember, being the king of the irradiated goo pile isn't much. So enter you, a bastard, a bastard who can nuke town, strap bombs to kids and send them in to assassinate their own fathers, help slavers track down fellow humans, and of course, possibly delete an entire continent with an alien death ray. Do not let the title of Chosen One fool you here, because these heroes are anything but. Number 5. Harry vs. The World – Disco Elysium Ah, good old Harry Dubois. A man who just… absolutely sucks and just fails upwards, doesn't he? What a legend. As you've probably gathered from the many, many positive inclusions of Disco Elysium in lists of mine, it's a game well worth your time and one that manages to hone in on the painful hypocrisy that is the human condition in a manner that is entirely its own. In this game, you are not playing as a hero, you're playing as a f loser who bumbles through situations and has to fight his very brain just to get a coherent sentence out. Trust me, I know that one. And it lets you, the player, decide what jumbled mess of ideas that he's going to spew forth. Now, you can play this game in so many ways that it's actually mind-boggling, but they are all tied together by one common facet, and that is that you are playing as a man who's not a very good human being. I mean, admittedly, he tries but boy howdy does he fail. You'll bungle interrogation, stick up for your beliefs in a manner that alienates others, and attempt to intimidate those who simply laugh in your face. You're trying your best to make the world better by removing a murderer from the streets, but everywhere you turn, you're just making things worse. It is deliciously painful, as is the ending of this game, which basically just says, it was some dude all along, some dude with a motive that's unsatisfying and almost alien to your theories of a wider intermingling conspiracy. And this is the thing. This this is real life. This isn't a whodunit that has all of these complex moving parts. Sometimes it is just random happenstance that you just get caught up in. And admittedly, there is a side story involving an alien parasite that's trying to mind warp a load of people in the world, but we're not covering that today. We're covering the fact that you, as a person, try to make the world better, but end up just leaving a load of broken dreams and people behind you. Woof. Number four, being the postal guy. Postal. Now, at the start of this often insane and very non-PC video game, you will probably find yourself utterly blindsided. And that is because, without warning or introduction, you just begin a killing spree that escalates to a nationwide massacre, and under this guise, this appears to be a game that is truly twisted and a power fantasy for all the wrong reasons and all the wrong people. However, if you read the game's manual, things take on a slightly different tone, for in the diary entries found within, it turns out that the player player's character, here named Postal Guy, isn't just going on a rampage for the hell of it, and rather that he's taking on the government who are plying his city with a plague that will cause hateful outbursts in people. Therefore, with this information at hand, the fact that the game begins with people charging you with guns in order to take you down suggests that the government is trying to silence you for uncovering this conspiracy. So you're just a misunderstood hero, right? Or no, I cannot say this clearly enough, no, you are not. Turns out that this was all just paranoia, and the real reason Postal Guy snapped was that he was being evicted from his house, as seen by the moving van in the opening, and was just going on a murder spree because he'd had enough of modern life. Meaning that while you might think that Postal Guy has good intentions in trying to save the world from government mind control, it turns out that he was the true threat to society. Number 3. State of Emergency Now, if we're being really honest here, the villains of the mostly forgotten PS2 carnage simulator known as State of Emergency are 
right up there in the comically evil category, as the corporation will wantonly fire on protesters and crack the skulls of anyone asking, sorry, can you repeat that again? And yet, despite flying the flag of freedom, the characters that you play as in this game and the way you control them are arguably just as bad. I say this because while the game discourages you from opening fire on civilians in your quest to cause unending chaos and destabilization, your only punishment for doing so is a small deduction to your overall point score. Plus, let's not forget, in a lot of these cases, you're destroying property and buildings that are not actually owned by the corporations. You're not attacking the tyrannical dictators here, you're actually attacking your local community. And you think that the corporation is going to release funds to repair the damage you've done? Not a chance, mate. And also, as a final point, once you complete the last level, there isn't even a happy ending to all of this madness. The lingering message is that of even more widespread uprising, with a hopeful voice saying, democracy will rise again, no more logos, no more slogans. I mean, I hate to break it to you, mate, but what usually happens after violent revolutions like this take place in the real world? Unfortunately, more tyrannical figures just step in to fill the power vacuum. It's not good. Eep. Yikes. Oh dear. Number 2. Running Over Civilians – Carmageddon Now, Much in the same way that State of Emergency places the player in a world so in love with the collapse of society that it's got the word dystopia tattooed on its lower back, Carmageddon lets the player jump behind the wheel of a motorized murder machine, all in the name of winning races at any costs. Yet where State of Emergency punishes you for killing civilians with a very light slap on the wrist, Carmageddon actively encourages you to run over people by giving you points. Oh dear. <laughs> in this world of death races, civilians are given precisely one minute in order to reach safety or risk being turned into windscreen jam by one of these mobile psychopaths. And I don't know about you, but one minute isn't exactly a lot of time to do much of anything, let alone find shelter. It's basically as if the purge was mixed with the fast and the furious. And that sounds absolutely terrifying. Now, while it's true the government of this city that is allowing these death races to take place are obviously the evildoers of the piece, you're not exactly sticking it to the man each and every time you smash through a stadium full of players and come out the other side with a new paint job. Now, true, you can win these races without hitting a single person if you're careful, but you're still allowing such races to continue by participating and are thus perpetuating a cycle of violence to the cities that you race through. In short, you're not a good person. And number one, the new deity of destruction, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. So here we have it, the game that everyone around the world and Yanan's dog has played through at least twice. It is the ultimate game of adventuring, it is the ultimate game of freedom, and ultimately, it's a game in which the villain does naff all for about 99% of it. Seriously, Alduin, get your dragon sh together, mate. Not only did you absolutely toe knife botch killing us at the beginning of this game, you do absolutely nothing to stop our rise to power aside from popping in to set lesser goons on us and then mug to the camera. Just get in there and kill us already! Plus, who can take a villain seriously when they patiently wait and watch us complete all manner of menial side quests for other, arguably more powerful beings? And while delivering, stealing, killing, and of course turning people into wheels of cheese, we're building up a rep that arguably overshadows Alduin as a true lord of chaos. You'd be quaking in your boots if the Dragonborn showed up in your town, as they're likely to stab your mate in the face, rob you blind, and then yell so loudly that your man was blasted through the baker's window. At least in the last game, Oblivion, there were hell gates scattered all over the world, reminding you that there was a big evil at play and that they were kind of a big deal. Plus, plus, by the time that we even got to this silly scaled sausage, we've killed so many dragons that it almost feels boring. So I tell you what, Al, why don't you take a seat over there and watch a true master at work? Now, who wants to die? I've got a fork. <laughs> And there we go, my friends. Those were eight times that you were more of a threat to society than the video game villain. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your as well as your suggestions for next week's video. As always, I've been Jules, and you can go follow my silly tongue-tied mess of a self over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, my friend. Hope to see you there, and you can follow James Dalzee over here on his socials. What a lovely chap that he is, and give him some 
some love in the chat as well. Mm, that goes to you, James. Take some of that. Take some of that, mate. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we detail today about how video game gamers can be kind of the worst, you, my friend, are the absolute best and you deserve the best in life, like love, happiness and success. And don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge. I believe in you. You need to believe in yourself as well. And I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today. You can do this. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.